if you protest, maybe you can change it. But if you say, well, it's not so bad, maybe it will change. The next day, you have something again that you don't like, and it's worse. And it grows, and it grows, and it grows until you cannot change it any longer. May 1944, when I could hear the drummer on the corner. Listen, all people. Everybody has to pack 20 kilos. And tomorrow morning, you will have to stand in front of your gate, prepared to be taken away. Where to? Nobody knows. We looked to each other. My mother started to cry and said, what's going to happen? The Germans hate us. They will kill us. No, I said. Why should they kill us? We haven't done anything. I'm sure they want to take us into the inner part of Hungary. It's a war going on. The Hungarian men are out at the frontier. And I'm sure they want the Jews to help the Hungarian women to do the work in the fields. So you will see that we are taken to the inner part of Hungary. Yes, my mother said, of course, because you never want to believe in the worst. You always believe the person who tells you that it can't be that bad. In the morning, I took my sack and went out to the street, and there was a no, big noise, people running out and in the house, children crying, dogs barking, and the gendarmes shouting that everybody should stand up. They wanted us in lines of five so they should be able to count us. And it took some time until this has been done. But still, nothing happened. So we were standing there in the street the whole day. It was late in the afternoon when the commander came and opened the gates of the ghetto and told us, please, get going. The houses were dark along the streets, the blinds drawn. Not one person out of our former neighbors opened the window to wave goodbye or said a word. Nobody cared that we were taken away inhabitants of the little town who lived close by. We children played together. Our mothers walked into the kitchen of each other, borrowing sugar and salt. Our fathers talked to each other, and now they were gone all. We were alone in the street. And walked away to the station where boxcars, wagons, waited with a sign for eight horses. They asked us to enter these wa wagons and counted 20, 50, 75, 98, 100. Stop.
And at the same moment, the doors open with a bang, and you can hear a big noise, German voices shouting, raus, get out, schnell, quick, dogs barking, and SS coming with their batons, hitting people, quick, men to the right, women to the left, do that. Do it quickly, get out of here, leave everything you brought with you, just quickly. My father and I stopped back for a moment. We wanted to know where did we come, where are we, and asked one of the men in striped clothes, where are we, and he answered, after looking around that there is no German Vernichtungslager, extermination camp, then I knew. But I didn't have time to talk to my father. I said, hurry, hurry, they are hitting, and run after my mother, and left my father joining the group of men. I took my mother under her arm, my sister was on the other side, and we walked towards a barbed wire fence where an elegant SS was standing with his baton, just like a god from the German mythology, Wotan, right, left, right, left, when our Row got there. He pointed to my mother, right, to my sister and me, left. We want to be together. They're my children, my mother said. You can take the bus. They can walk. And pointed impatiently to the next row. Water, my mother said. Please, let me have some water. You'll have coffee when you get there, he said. When my mother got there, and the faucet opened, it was gas. Isn't it strange that not even we wanted to believe? How can you believe that such evil exists? And how can we ask today that people should believe? But you have to believe. And I'm happy that you are here to tell everybody that it is true, that this evil has existed. I think I stop again now. Please. Now, when I, I hear what Hedy tells you, I mean, I think I share your feeling that we, we cannot understand and we, it's hard for us to believe that man does this to man. You know, but still, of course, I, I'm also a historian, and I've I've studied this, and and I've talked to many people like Katie, you know, and I know that unfortunately this is the truth. Uh, now there is one question for me, which for me personally was always very important, is that as I've as I've said, you know, my parents' generation, for me in my experience, they were loving people although I knew and I know now that they were criminals, you know. But what is for me the most important question is that what made them become like this? What made them do it? And even more important, the question, would I, in their 